So let's just start here. This is a little mixing bowl pitcher that I made with a handle. This is Amico Snow C10. And what I've done here in the middle where the ribbing is, is I have put three coats of Honey Flux, which I have over here. Honey Flux is a PC-17. And Honey Flux, of course, is gonna make things move. So I put that in here. And then I put two coats of Iron Luster. Two coats of Iron Luster. Right here, you see this band in the middle. And then one more coat of the PC-17 Honey Flux. And that's gonna bring out a lot of color. Uh, and then I've got my snow that comes down here. And snow, as you all know, is going to be a, a nice glossy white. This should come out with some real interesting colors. I put it on the handle. And this is just going to be a really neat little egg mixing bowl, you know, for scrambled eggs and so forth on Saturday morning whenever you've got time. So we'll set that one aside. And uh, this is a favorite. You've probably seen this blend in one of my short videos. I try to keep things short, but this one's gonna be a little bit longer. So yeah, grab some popcorn, sit back and watch. This is a porcelain vase and I've made one like this before with the handles. And this is ancient copper, which has now been discontinued by Amico. So if you've got some, hang on to it, use it for those special pieces that you have. But this is ancient copper, it comes up to here. And we've got that, it's PC 56. And then what I do up here is I put obsidian. And obsidian is a celadon, so it's very stable, C1. And then we put our seaweed on top of that. And I've got that over here, seaweed is PC 42. Obsidian and seaweed will give you just Tremendous colors, beautiful. The seaweed is a runner, it will make it run. All of this is going to flow down and mix with this copper. And that's just gonna be gorgeous when it's done. Uh, I've done one, like I said before, it came out just probably the favorite piece I've ever done in the three or four years that I've been working with pottery. Uh, I hope, I'm trying to replicate that piece. I don't know that you can ever replicate a piece, but here's my shot at it. And the inside, I did here is actually a Shino, new ones from Amico, which is the SH46. And that's just on the interior. I don't think you can see it very well, but it should be a nice rustic look in there. So there we go with that one. I've got several other pieces here. Let's see, we've got a bowl. I had a little bit of extra clay left the other day and I just, I threw a bowl because I wanted a bowl to eat out of. I'd use them in the house for different things. This is one where I did some mixing. Uh, this one is actually a coyote glaze on the inside and part way down right to here. This is Pam's Green, which is MBG, get the glasses on, MBG 038. And I've used this before. It can give you almost some oil spotting, uh, darks, lights. It, it's a beautiful color, but it's a darker color. I've used it on some cookware that looked really nice. And then this bottom part again, I went back to the matcha that we had here. The matcha matte, and it is a very matte color by Amico. And then right in here, just to tie the two together, I did that seaweed and that seaweed will just make them blend a little bit. I've never done a combination like this, never mixed the two together. We'll see what happens. Uh, it'll be really fun to pull out of the kiln and, uh, and see what we've got there. So some of these other pieces, I got a couple of new glazes I'm working with. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have ever used this new flux glaze. This is River Birch. PCF 74 and that's River Birch from Amico and this is just a little bowl and it's inside and out you see these specks these specks give you little brown runs that kind of look like a birch mark uh, that's the thing got another piece over here let me grab it I 
another large bowl that I've done that with. These are mostly on Dark Star by Kentucky Mudworks, so they are speckled clay. This is a large bowl. I've got this river birch in here. And what I did at the top, because I'm always looking for some kind of blend, I have a hard time doing a single color, but PC32 Albany Slip Brown is around the rim of this. And I went right around the rim with probably three or four coats. And then I came back with that Honey Flux to make it run. And if you can see, I've got some real heavy drips, like right in here. It's just a kind of thick on that rim and it's inside and out. So we should get a, uh, it'll move. It'll move on the inside and out, both this way and just kind of flow a little bit so we get a really nice edging on this one. But this one's gonna be fun. Uh, a really big bowl, I'm trying to think. I think that's on Dark Star. Dark Star is a really light clay, like Tony Beaver, but it has specks in it. And so uh, it throws really smooth, it's really easy. It's kind of wet when you first start with it, so you kind of got to let it dry a little bit and do some extra wedging. But that's going to be a really nice big bowl. That's probably about a you know, 12, 12 inch bowl across the top and a nice little Asian style. It'll be pretty. It'll be real pretty. So I got one other piece that I used that particular one on. And that's a really large hand built here that I just made out of slabs, as you can see. And this is, I've got three coats of Honey Flux on this. And this is, again, the Dark Star Clay. And then what I did was after putting three coats of Honey Flux on it, I did another coat really light of the River Birch. So this is a speckled clay. The River Birch is gonna have those brown pieces in it that just kind of give you a little bit of run. And this should turn out really nice. And I like at the top where I know it's not gonna run off. I'll just put it real heavy, as you can see there. And we'll get some real good drips. Uh, some of these I've put like on the edges, like right in here, you can see that. And it'll run down. And that's gonna be really cool. I've made a few of these. I don't have any on hand. They sell as quick as I can can make them. Uh, so I thought I'd make one for myself just to just to look at for a little bit until somebody comes by and wants it. So some other things we've got here. I've got some mugs. This is always uh, one of my favorites. I've got three of these that are going to be coming out. Uh, one's a little bit of a twisty mug. You can see how it just started to collapse. And when they do that, a lot of times, if it's a really nice looking mug, I get up, it's a wet clay like that. Like I say that uh, the Dark Star and the Tony Beaver can be pretty wet. Then it just kind of gives it character. I just stop, finish off the lip. But this is, again, Honey Flux. Put down three coats of Honey Flux on that, which is again, the PC-17 Honey Flux and then give it two coats of Iron Luster. But what you have to do on this one is you put down the Honey Flux and then you put a nice band right here, just a band about that thick and then another one down about this thick. Put two coats of it and then put one full coat on everything so that you've got heavier Iron Luster in a couple of places and it'll give you some real nice flowing uh, and you'll see that when these mugs come out. I've got one I did previously. If you can see that, you get this really nice flow. There's burgundy and blue and just a lot of different colors in this thing. It's a gorgeous mug. This is on porcelain. Uh, this one is actually on peppered wheat from Brackers, and so it's a darker clay. 
and I tried these two. I made a couple of porcelain mugs. You can see how white that is. But I did a couple of porcelain mugs to do this same glaze on, and I want to see how much different it is. It'll be really interesting when they come out of the kiln and check them out. So, but we've got three of those. And let me see here. A couple of these mugs I've just done some single colors on. This is going to be Crazed Copper by Coyote. It's just a Crazed Copper mug. You can see how I've got some texture in here where I grooved it on the way around in my trimming. But that's Crazed Copper, which is MBG 036. And this comes out really turquoise uh, and it crackles sometimes. You get a little bit of crackle in it. And uh, it gives you a lot of pretty stuff. Then we've got, let's see, I'm gonna have another mug here that is just the, what was it, the river birch. That one's a complete river birch inside and out with some texture. See how that comes out. And uh, this one will be really interesting. I've never done this, and some of you may have tried it. This is actually, let's see if I can find my color. This is eggshell. I don't seem to have it handy here. But this is eggshell by Coyote, which is kind of a flat light. And then you can see that's loose. I'll have to be careful when I get it in the kiln. But then I just took some leftover crumbs and put in here, and we're gonna see what that does. And it's just a bowl, nothing fancy, a nice little bowl, but it'll glaze up pretty. I take some of this stuff and I experiment with it, and if it works out great, then yeah, enjoy it, sell it. And if not, then, you know, there's always somebody that'll take a free gift. So, let's see what else we have here. Some of these, I've been making a lot of mugs getting ready for Christmas, getting ready for the holiday season. Uh, I don't do a lot of stuff. This is really a hobby for me, but occasionally uh, my wife likes to get involved and she does some really neat uh, geometric work and uh, working with some of these uh, glazing. Glazing can be a little tedious at times, especially when you're working with mugs, but uh, I've got Here's a few of them that she has done. This is a really neat, gonna be a, this is a, a dark star clay. You can see that, and it's wasabi. It's a celadon, so it's C43. And the celadons are very, very stable, so you don't have to worry too much about it being close on the bottom or anything. She's gonna stay right where you put it. Always try to remember that with the celadons. Uh, I don't have to give it too much room or be too cautious with it. This is another one. This is Coyote. And what we've done here, she did these. I threw it with the grooves because I like the grooves and always something different. But she's kind of ombre this one. You can see that. And we've got Coyote Red Orange, which is MBG 017. And that's at the very top up here. And then she went to the pumpkin right here on the next level in the middle. And that's MBG 051P. You can see that on the barcode. And then the next one is Coyote's really red at the very bottom, MBG 071P. But these are real stable glazes. That's the one thing I love about most of these Coyote glazes too, is that they don't have a lot of runners that I've ran into. When you put these here, they're solid. I've got a little bitty bead right here at the bottom. If you can see that, turn it. And I just, I know that glaze is gonna stay right where I put it. It's not going anywhere. Here's another one of hers that she did. This is gonna be the red orange at the top, really red down here. Got my little signature peace sign on the handle. 
and uh, that will come out really cool. It'll be fun pulling that out of the kiln. Here's another one that uh, is real different. I can find it. This is, we. she mixed two, an Amico and a Coyote in this particular uh, series. Lapis satin, and this is a real flat purple. And uh, it just, that color, if you can see that right there, is just really close to what it comes out. It's MBG 082 by Coyote. And uh, I mean, some of these glazes are fairly inexpensive. This one was $11. So I think I, I, some of the Coyote glazes can be a little bit cheaper. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm always on a budget. So, but what we did here with that one was she, she put this lapis satin inside and out, and then she went over it with, because wasabi is a celadon that's so stable, she tried it on the outside of this, trying to get that green to mix with the purple a little bit and see what she could come up with. She put it on the inside and the out, and that'll be fun to see. What do we get? I don't know, I, I use mugs a lot of times for test tiles. I mean... That's my first shot at this, you know. That's a heck of a nice little test tile, if you ask me. Got some nice little runs at the bottom. Yeah. I'm not doing this for a living. I'm just doing it for fun. So, uh, hey, why not? Here's another one that she did. Neat little pattern. They come out really cool. Using uh, pinstriping tape or in office supplies, dots, whatever. This is Sunset Pink by Coyote. MBG 021. And I love this. This is, uh, it is, when they say Sunset Pink, it really does can come out with some oranges and yellow mixed in with a pink. It's a beautiful color. I, I like this one a lot. Uh, and I use it on different things, but you'll see when it comes out. I'll make sure we take a good look at that one. So I think we're getting close to see. We've got, here is Snow. This is Snow Inside and Out by Amico. And then I believe what we've got here is either Buttercup or Marigold. But she did a yellow, I believe she did the Marigold right here, which is another Celadon of C60. So we're gonna have the yellow at the bottom and the white of snow at the top. It'll be really pretty. Let's see, here's another one. Snow, inside and out. And then this is the crazed copper. So we'll have turquoise and white. And that'll be really neat. I've got one here that I did previously. I threw it, she glazed it. Look at that little mug. Isn't that gorgeous? Just a neat little coffee mug. Put a nice little foot on it, you know, like a like a little tea bowl. You can't beat that. It's just pretty. Pretty, pretty stuff. So I think that's getting close. I made a little sake cup, which is the pan's green on the inside. It's got the eggshell on the outside, and then of course I did my little seaweed around the top and out here. It should give us a, some run. A little bit of drip down through here, not a lot, but we'll get some green fade inside and out. And that'll be pretty. So I think that's the majority of what I've got here. And like I said, I'm gonna load this kiln up tonight. We'll run it, open it up in the morning, and then uh, I'll shoot these pieces again and add to this video. So it's going to be a long video and I apologize for that, but I hope it helps some of you out with seeing what these glazes do and how you can use them for yourself. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And here are the results. We have our mixing bowl. I'm going to cover these in the order that I tried to describe the glazing process in the beginning of the video. This is snow, Emico snow with iron luster and honey flux in here. So we got that nice mix and run, you can see that? Turned out nice. We have our porcelain right here. 
with ancient copper. And then we had obsidian up here, the black C1 obsidian with seaweed that gave us that real pretty running and colors. See all that, how nice that is. <clears throat> There's our little bowl with a little swirl, pans green. And you can see some modeling in there. It does that, it put it on there heavy and it has a really pretty model. We had our matcha from Amico on the bottom. This was one that we mixed a little bit here into two different types of glazes. And it turned out really nice. The new Flux Glaze River Birch from Amico. And I didn't get it on quite heavy enough. You can see another couple of coats on there would have made this a little bit better. But it turned out nice. It's stable. We didn't get a lot of running or anything in here. Pretty bold. It will... It will definitely hold oatmeal. Here's our nice large bowl. And we did this with the river birch all over. And then on the rim, we did uh, Albany Slip Brown with Honey Flux. You can see how that dripped real nice at the top right up in here. It turned out pretty. Got a couple of grooves that I put in here. This is something if you're new to pottery that you might just remember. This kind of helps catch any glazes that run. Uh, put you a little, little glaze catch right in that foot. And it works real well. Kind of save a kiln shelf. We have our bottle that we did with Honey Flux. And then we put just a light coat of the river birch on it. You can see up here on the top. And I went real heavy to get some, I wanted these runs in it. So I really globbed it on up in here just to give it some character. Nice little bottle. Got these mugs that we did. And again, this is all on Kentucky Mudworks Dark Star uh, Speckled Clay. This is Honey Flux. And then we did a couple of bands of the Iron Luster and then covered it over with a complete coat of iron luster. So it was just thicker in a couple of places. But we did three of those and they turned out really nice. Your clay body is gonna affect how these come out. Lighter clays and darker clays will react a little differently. But these turned out really nice. And then we have our crazed copper from Coyote. Pretty heavy. Again, we kind of get, it does sag a little bit. You'll need to watch this one. It can, you need a little foot on it or something. I like the way it reacts with the dark star speckles. It does tend to cause it to kind of have a, almost a river bird to drip look there in with the specks. We have a Coyote eggshell that we did and it's a kind of a flat with our just glazed chips, things that were pulled off and saved when you tape things. Uh, and it just, it made a really neat kind of fruity pebble look in there. <clears throat> then here are some of our mugs that were designed this way. We got Amico Wasabi. It's just a nice green on this. It is darker on different clays, but this is a light clay, like I say, and it does uh, the dark star with the specks. Almost gives you an avocado look. Really nice there. This was our coyote glazes, which was uh, red, orange, pumpkin, and really red. I've got those together. Another one with the red orange and the really red. These seem to be real stable. I enjoy using these. Here's our lapis satin. And then we had a little bit of uh, wasabi at the top trying to get a different effect. It really just kind of made it darker. We didn't really get a green out of it or anything different. But it was stable. It's pretty, I mean, you can see right down to the edge on these. They don't run. They, they stay where you put them. Sunset Pink 
Could have been heavier. You can see through here a little bit. You can see where it was a little bit heavier. So you get some real neat sunset colors in here. You can pick up some reds and oranges. And uh, I like this glaze for specific things. See in there. It's a, it's a, it's a really nice, nice color. And then uh, we've got these that were against snow. And this, I believe, was Buttercup. This is a brighter uh, orange than the Amico Marigold. So I'm just pretty sure this was Coyote uh, Buttercup. And that's why we've got such a, such a nice pop there with the yellow. It's pretty. Crazed Copper and Snow, which is Crazed Copper's Coyote. Snow is Amico. And it does tend to drip a little bit if you get real heavy. You can see we got a little bit of run in here. Snow just does such a great job of giving you a nice bright white, nice finish, smooth. Love that. Just love that. You can drink coffee out of that all day long. And we have this little sake cup, which was the seaweed around the rim. And we had our eggshell. And I can't really remember what we put in there. Maybe some pans green or something, but it's a neat little cup. And then I had a couple that I must have missed, uh, but here's River Birch again, just on a mug. Gave us some real nice color, drips. And this is one that, uh, these are porcelain mugs. I threw a couple of porcelain mugs this is Iron Luster with oatmeal on top of it. And it really does bring out some gorgeous colors there. I like this combination. It uh, has kind of an old vintage look. Just look at, can you see the inside of that mug and the colors on the outside? It's just really pretty, really pretty. So that wraps it up. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.